and good morning, family. Thank you for joining us today. You know, this good looking guy that's sitting right next to me here, Jamie McGavanagh. Many of you know him. Hello. Coolest guy in the world. <laughs> Jamie is um, on our staff here at Sanctuary, as you know, and many of you watch his podcast whenever he does it. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> So Jamie, how you doing Point today? Taken. I'm doing all right. Just uh, out here in uh, Brentwood, Tennessee. All right. Yeah. About to do a little work out there this morning. Yes, and, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, dude, it's um, it's the beginning of fall. Weather is a little better here in Tennessee. It feels a lot a better, lot doesn't better. it? Oh, For a those lot of better. us that don't like the heat. No, and exactly. you know things could not be any better. Sitting with great friends, drinking a little headbanger brew, which of course is the thing to do every morning. Just saying, <laughs> true. And uh, yeah, it's a good day. So Jamie, we've got some exciting things coming up. Um, we've got uh, the next sanctuary barbecue, the Bob barbecue, is happening yep. in just ten days from now. And uh, let's chat about that for a minute. Why don't you? All right. Well, <clears throat> this uh, this is uh, a, a very exciting for all of us, um, especially staff, I would say. Um, uh, I guess I can speak for them, but uh, it's... Yeah, you can. <laughs> this is something that uh, has been stirring in our hearts for a, a long time. And then when it's time, God reveals when things are supposed to happen and then and yes they have so um it's wonderful to i'm gonna take this one out here um it's wonderful to see it's wonderful to see and more than anything you know god's timing when you walk in the door you feel him and you walk in uh, everybody else starts showing up and then you just have that family environment of you're so glad to see everybody and just this anticipation of what God is going to do. And yes, for so long, uh, you know, Sanctuary has been an international ministry. There's been no need to have get togethers necessarily. Although, you know, people that have been, you know, with Sanctuary for a very, very long time, um, of course, get together and things of that nature. But more importantly, uh, so this is really where God has brought us is finally to this place and everybody within their heart, within their mind, it's just a very, very peaceful, wonderful feeling that, that, uh, that God is doing something that we can all meet and have him do something, um, and know that he's going yes. to do. And, and, and to be able to, to check in with each other, to see each other, to, you know, have a chance to interact is, is up is awesome. So, yeah. In the room behind me, Jamie, if we can put me in the picture too, um, is uh, is the the building where we do this. This is the we call it the storehouse because yeah. it's kind of a double duty building. It this is where we distribute all the food to the the homeless, to the traffic, to the the shelters, to all the different places that we distribute food to. That's part of this. But this room behind me, and you can't see the majority of the room, but but it's filled with people. And um, right behind me is where the worship team will be setting up. Uh, Jim Liberti and George Ochoa and Glenn Man Caruso and et cetera, et cetera. They're all right here and ready to lead worship. It's where we spend some time in the Word, spend some time eating. That's important. And... Uh, and this is the storehouse behind me. And we've been doing this now, Jamie, for a year. It's been a year since we've been kind of getting together and doing, I've been doing barbecues for a few years, but it's been a year now that we've been getting together and doing this. It's true. And, and some consistency. And uh, and it, it keeps growing and it keeps expanding and uh, there's a lot of hunger for it, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... You can see it on everybody's faces when they walk in. They are ready to talk. Yes. Um, 
they're ready to talk and they're ready to uh some of them you know they've been they were with sanctuary many many years ago uh and to see their faces it's like this mind-boggling situation where you like I, I what was it uh uh there's been several times where i just go oh my goodness like i haven't seen this person in like 25 years yeah and, and i'm like going this is unbelievable and i'm just looking at them <laughs> trying to process how, how it's been so long but then then the fun part happens where you explain what happened for the last 25 years. Yes. And it's just this, <clears throat> some of it is wonderful and some of it is just tragic. And, but there's, there's this hunger and this starvation that is happening with people. And so when we get together, it's like, uh, not just, a, not just, uh, eating metaphorically, but, uh, but e- eating literally, <laughs> but we're, we're just eating up all this information and spiritually realizing yes. we have so much in common yeah. that we have so much, so much heartbreak that we can help each other with, you know, and, and yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. It really has been. Yeah. It's been great. And folks, again, if you're ready for a road trip, you know, there are people, Jamie, that drive eight hours to get here and there it is. Our next event is October 7th and 8th. And our theme this time, Jamie, is agape, love at full volume. And we're going to have a a great time with that on on Saturday, Saturday at 3. And then Sunday morning, starting at 9.30, we do our uh, 242 gathering. It's based on Acts 242. And uh, we do a little more of an intimate study and some some uh, Socratic discussion and whatever we can do there. But it's a really great weekend, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. And you know, one of the one of the highlights about it also is uh, is the food, Jamie. (laughs) And we have the world's best cook that prepares the meals. And I'm talking about this guy. Jamie, you, you and you've got some special food planned for this weekend, too this next weekend i do i do yeah we're gonna do we're gonna do some special stuff uh i, I love to cook absolutely yes. love it and you know this was not something i would have ever for foreseen me ever doing but um but i love to feed people i love to give them delicious food you know and so all of a sudden this you know this was thrown into our lap because this is when we talk about acts 242 this is one of the elements yes and it's there's no coincidence that that was one of the elements and uh uh, i can i can definitely tell you having a meal with someone a delicious meal fulfilling uh all of those wonderful senses that you need uh, yes taken care of and then being able to relax and love with people and love on people and worship the Lord. It's just what a combination it's, it's, it is. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jamie, we've got a few people joining us today. Matt's good morning to you folks. As you come on, let me know where you're from. Would love to know where people are joining us from. Joel is here. He says, I wish more Christian metal gigs and bands would tour Australia. I agree with you. We need to. And uh, I miss Australia. I'd love to come back. And Jamie, we wouldn't mind going, would we? No, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't mind. They make it they make it kind of difficult for us to do that right now, but there you go. Yeah. Well, here's an old friend. He says, "How are you doing?" There you go. The past weekend, I went to Furnace Fest. Awesome. Had fun and met members of Living Sacrifice, Demon Hunter, Training for Utopia, Holy Name, The Insiders making a few new friends. There were some great bands playing, wasn't there? Wow. And uh, Furnace Fest happened this last weekend. Yeah. So it's always a great annual event. There's our friend Brian. Now, there he Brian is. drives a little ways to come here. Yes, he does. Brian, how far do you drive each time you come? Because uh, he's one of those world warriors that drives a distance to get here for the for the uh, barbecue. We appreciate that, Brian. And it's always good to see Brian and his wife. 
Diego is here. Good morning to you. What's up, Diego? He's awesome. Yeah, he follower is. of Sanctuary. My name is nobody. Wow. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> nobody special. Good morning to you. Yes. <laughs> Greetings from that? Costa Rica. You, you know, remember that beautiful band, country. Uh, you remember that punk rock band, Nobody Special? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. With Pat yeah. Nobody. Yep, yes. Pat Nobody. Yes. I used to yeah. love that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he was Joey Taylor from, um, oh, uh, what's the name of the band? I just read Undercover. His Undercover. brother. That's His brother. another yeah. one of my favorite bands. Dude, totally so. Totally yeah. so. And, um, but Costa Rica, you know, I've seen pictures of Costa Rica. I've never been there, but no, man, I'd love to, to one day. It looks beautiful. Beautiful. David Kelly White, good morning to you. He says, how are you doing this morning? I, I think we're both doing pretty well, Davey. Doing all right. He's from Littleton, Colorado, 54 degrees, a little chilly there. there. You go. Hope all is well there. And... Well, we're not actually in Woodbury. We're a little ways from Woodbury. Jamie, you live in the Woodbury area, it, actually. Yeah, it's uh, it's about, I live in the town right next to Woodbury. That's where my kids go to, well, one of my children goes to school. Yes. And the other, the other, my oldest one goes to MTSU for the music program. And uh, yes. very proud of him. And Todd just checked in. Uh, Todd on our staff, and he lives in Woodbury. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he does. Tony Block says he hopes to make a gathering, maybe November. That'd be great. You know, it's my birthday gathering in November again. Doesn't seem like it's been a year. Yeah, so come on and celebrate with me. That'd be fun. Albert is here from Winnipeg, Canada. Got some right. great friends joining us today, Jamie. So you were just talking about your two sons, you actually have three. I have three. And, uh, yeah, good morning, Ken, from Staten Island. Staten Island, that's from Long Island. <laughs> that's, that's, that's more on the uh, my neck of the woods, where I'm from, Connecticut. It is, yes. It's very close to, yeah. That's where you grew up. Austin yeah. is here with us. Jamie, we know him well. He's at our gatherings, great guy. Oh, dude, love that yeah. guy. I do too. He's awesome. He and his wife are here with us often, so I'm hoping we he's appreciate gonna be that. There. Hope they, hopefully, he's going to be there this next time with his wife. I think and, he is. And, yes. Yeah, we've been fortunate to see him. Yeah. See, look at Brian travels five and a half hours. Yes. Yeah, Brian. Thank you for answering that question. Yeah, five and a half hours to get here. That's let's dedication, the, isn't it? Let's change that to fifteen <laughs> minutes and move here. Huh? Yeah. There you go. David, good morning to you from Ohio. Awesome. And uh, another Jamie. It's a Jamie day. We have Jamie McCavanaugh right now. Jamie Rowe from Guardian and a new band we're going to talk about is uh, going to be joining us in just a little bit. Jamie says good morning. Good morning to you. It's a good name, isn't it, Jamie? It's a very good name. Yes. And Very Dorothy good is a good friend. Good morning to you. Good to see you all. So, Jamie, you have three sons. I do. And uh, and your oldest son is in college. Hard to believe, right. isn't it? I know. Your second one is in high school, or those yeah. of you that are joining us in Europe, gymnasium. And yep. then <clears throat> your third son is how old this year? Uh, he just turned six on the 20th. Yeah. So so you have quite a spread. Oh my gosh, yeah. But uh, they're all every one of them. They're every one of the boys are amazing. Ah, oh, there's Peter. Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah, it's good to see Peter. We have to get together soon. Let's do it. Sweden. Yeah. So he needs to come and visit again, doesn't he, Jamie? Yeah, he does. Yeah. That'd be but awesome. In all fairness, uh, he's come here a couple times. I need to go over there. So. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Uh, Austin oh, says he's, he's in a wedding on the seventh. I, I guess Excuse we'll let it. it slide. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, come on Sunday morning if you can. That'd be awesome. 
So, Jamie, it's it's a little, it feels a little strange to have children that are growing up so quickly, doesn't it? Ugh. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. It, it's I a, know. It, it's... The most frustrating, and I'm sure all the, the parents out there that have children in schools um, uh, and just in general, even, even with just uh, homeschooling, but uh, it is not... Um, a welcoming world for the Christian uh, family yes. right now, and uh, especially here in the United States, there's a uh, very obvious um, anger against a Christian way of life and well, an raising, attack, isn't it? Yeah, no, and raising yeah. children as Christian and and how amazingly offensive it is now and. Uh, but when it comes to the the parents' side of things, um, it's just heartbreak because we understand the pull of the world. We understand what's uh, what's coming their way, uh, what happened in our life. But then we have to also um, calculate that it's going to be much, much worse than what we experience and it is now. But how do you prepare a child for this world? Yeah, it's uh, tough. Whew. It is That's a challenge. Yeah, and uh, and training them in the Lord and in the like we say in the nurture and admonition of Jesus Christ. It's yeah. It's um. It's a constant challenge and a constant. Um, uh, it has to be constantly on your mind. You have to keep thinking about it. You know, how do I train them? How do I teach them? Using every situation as a learning experience. Yeah. It's important, yeah. isn't it? It's mm -hmm. this, we have to steer them. We have to steer them to the right direction, but we can't make all their decisions for them. We can't do, you know, it's like we understand we're in responsibility of these children. God is the one that takes care of them. And yes. he's the one that guides them throughout the rest. So we, we can only do up until a certain point, And then he's got it from there because they grow up having their own purpose, their own reason in life. And we uh, can encourage them towards that. We should be able to recognize what that direction is so we can push them there. But once they grab a hold of the, you know, what the world is going to be doing, then we have to have the faith of the Lord that he's going to protect them, take care of them, that he's going to bring them back around because they have to find their own faith because they've been relying on their par their parents' faith for so long. Yes. And yes. then they have to now discover their own faith and what they believe with the Lord. And that's a scary time for every parent. And it's heartbreaking because totally you is. think, yes. you, you know, you think like, look at how terrible everything is. I mean, it's so easy for the world to grab your child and run. Yeah, you know? it really is. And it's it Glenn. really is. Good morning, dude. Good morning, Glenn wow. Mancaruso. Awesome. <laughs> you know, Jamie, I, I think what you just said is so true. And we we um, not only need to prepare our children, but we need to prepare our spiritual families. Yeah. You know, the church. The, we yep. need to encourage our friends. You know, we, we keep looking around and saying, well, things will get better. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal, and we need to be ready. So Peter yep. is joining us today from Tampa, Florida. Cool. He said it's getting only slightly cooler here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice when when fall hits, autumn hits, and it's oh. really my favorite time of the year. You rarely see me inside when it comes to deep fall yes. and the winter. I'm always outside. I, I absolutely love it. Yes, me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, folks, if you're joining us, sign in. Let us know where you're from. If you're joining us on Twitch or on YouTube or on Facebook or wherever you're joining us today, your uh, your message will come through and we'll be able to put it up on the screen. But let us know where you're from and it just kind of gives us an idea of our audience, doesn't it, Jamie? And we're excited that the Sanctuary audience is international, that we have great friends all over the world and we're very thankful that the that the Christian metal family is so huge. Yeah. It really True. is. 
Yep. Well, Jamie, you and I have been friends for a long time. Yeah. And uh, we we met each other on an airplane. I think we've talked about that in the past. Yes, but, we have. Uh, we met as you were trying to avoid me, and and then we ended up, I think, sitting next to each other, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and you were trapped. But we... <laughs> yeah. It's one of those friendships that God brings together because there's no other way that it happened. But uh, a few years ago, how old were you, Jamie, at that point? I think I was 17. 16 okay. or just turning yeah. 17 or, or, or whatever uh yeah yeah it was about 17. yeah that's amazing isn't it it is because i'm 49 years old now wow how did that happen yeah i didn't just say that i'm 39 years old yeah you're 29 29 yeah. right well, well, yeah, folks was, once uh, again and uh ron brown Good day to you. Good to see you today. We want to talk about the upcoming weekend that we have and invite people to that once again. Um, October 7th and 8th. It's two days. And uh, we would love to have you join us if you can, folks. Some of you would need to do a little bit of a road trip to make it. But if you can, that would be great. And uh, there it is on the screen plan to attend and again we do this the first weekend of every month so if you can't make this one make another one but plan to attend do a road trip whatever it takes to come and and to join us we're excited to have everybody here and again good food from this guy good <laughs> food and uh, jamie you you are um you're mostly an Italian cook, because that's the kind of food you like the most, or not? I, you know, it's always a. I grew up, uh, so we were one Irish family surrounded by Italians, right? Uh, and so we're we're we grew up as a, a an Irish family with flavor. <laughs> we prefer to have uh, Italian, but um, that is probably one of my favorites. For sure, I love yeah. Italian food. I know a lot about it, uh, but uh, I love all kinds of ethnic food. Every every kind, French to uh, any type of Oriental, Thai, you know, Chinese, uh, and possibly uh, Irish. Possibly Not so Irish. much Irish. I don't really care. I mean, I like to take the dishes and make them delicious, but pretty much it's always bland. You know, um, <laughs> it's always a bland dish, and so you got to do stuff to it. You know, like I my uh, my shepherd's pie, I actually put curry in it. You know, because I wow. think it's way better with curry. But uh, so you're but yeah, so like you're that. but your heritage is Irish, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's I'm very proud statement. of that. I just don't really care for the food. <laughs> yeah, you, you just need to to visit Ireland and teach them how to cook. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. Yeah, they would uh, they'd laugh in my face, throw a drink in my face. But there you go. No, I'm, I, I, I love it. Love Irish uh, heritage and uh, I'm a citizen over there as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've had interesting food in Ireland. And, I, and the one thing that I remember the most about Ireland is it was the first place that I actually ate blood soup. Oh. Yeah, and didn't realize what I was eating until about halfway through. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. But they eat a lot of interesting things. And of course, you know, the classic foods, but that's the one that I remember the most. <laughs> and blood Not sausage. so good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't yeah. uh, like blood sausage either. No. Uh, no, they use they use the blood for a lot of things, and and I get that. It's just, that was just a little unnerving. <laughs> Not my knowing you, I, it must today. have been. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. definitely was. I will usually try anything, but that was uh, yeah, just a little much. Exactly. Well, Jamie, we've got a lot of great things coming up with uh, with Sanctuary with 
um, our gatherings here. Um, a lot of things that we'll be announcing soon, by the way. And, uh, you know, and it's been a great summer. You know, our time at Immortal Fest was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, we had, well, you weren't able to go this year, that's right. I was, yeah, I wasn't able to go there, but I, I, I've heard a yes. ton of stories, and I'm very thankful to hear what I've heard, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we had a great time there, and Jamie, we're, we're reminded of all the, the, the people that have connected with Jesus uh, through the ministry of heavy metal. And, you know, when we all get together like that and, and, and actually any kind of a metal concert, but this one especially was mostly all the old metal heads. And, you know, you just feel like we really are family. That's why our moniker is, is so important. You know, we are metal, we are family because we really are. Yeah, it's been really great. We really well, have been, my friend. We, yes. we really have been. Uh, just so you guys know, we're really focusing on uh, going into and really manifesting all those definitions of what a family is. Yes, and um, we 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 understand. And obviously, if you guys have been watching Pastor Bob's. Uh, 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 podcasts for many years you understand where we we lie when it comes to the church and how we see things and we really want to do it we really really yes. want to be able to um, do acts 242 in the way that the lord wanted us to do it and uh and we believe that that's where god is bringing the church uh, yes. uh you know whether it's kicking and screaming and dragging you know them god will do it because he loves us but uh, so that's what we're, we're really focusing in on that. And, and we really want to do things right when it comes to this, because we understand that you guys are listening and we have to be listening to the Lord uh, yes. to do it right. So anyways, yes. yeah, it takes the whole family and it, it takes a village. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Well, we're excited for that and we're excited for the future. And folks, we're excited that you've joined us today. Joel, thank you. And he says that the scene needs to be a little bigger in Australia. Uh, that You still do Parachute, uh, the festival. I'm wondering if that's still going on there. Uh, Tim says hello from South Africa. Good morning to you, Tim. People are joining us all over. AB says summer was up and down for me. My family and I had gone through rough patches. I'm sorry to hear that. I think this yeah. fall would be rougher. I pray for God's strength and guidance. Thank you for your encouragement. And uh, I'm sorry to hear that, but yes. You know, it, an old uh, TV preacher used to say, tough times never last. Tough people do. Tough people with their, with their, their feet rooted in the word and standing on the word of God and if establishing that communication with God every day. Jamie, when we do that, it seems like we can get through anything, huh? It's true. Yes. Zim, good morning to you. Well, Jamie, thank you. I'm going to bring on the other Jamie. We have It's a two Jamie day today. The other Jamie is, of course, Jamie from Guardian and from a brand new band we're going to tell you about. And um, we're excited to have him on in just a minute. Don't go anywhere, folks. Stay right there. We have some more coming up in just a minute.
All right. Well, welcome back, folks. And uh, as you see on the screen, we have a very special guest joining us this morning, Jamie Rowe. Good morning to you, my good, good morning, friend. Pastor Bob. How are you? I just look at that picture. Yeah. It's like, okay, wow, that was that was that was last summer, and that was tan. Yeah, today is just <laughs> not so much. Yeah, there you go. Good morning, well, brother. Dude, good to see you, and. Uh, Jamie, uh, it's um, it's exciting the things that are going on with you, and uh, the new music, and mm -hmm. of course, in our audience right now, there are people that have been Jamie Rowe fans for a lot of years. Wow! And so, we have uh, we have some questions that are coming in, and folks, if you have a question for Jamie that you'd like to have him answered, just make sure that you that you drop it wherever you're watching on Twitch, on YouTube, on. Facebook, wherever you're viewing this right now, um, just write the question out. Also, let us know where you're from. It'd be great to have you right here. So um, Matt says, are you going to be with us next weekend? You know, we've you've been here once in a while for our, our barbecue, and I appreciate whenever you're able to make it. Jamie's a busy guy. <laughs> it, it's it is true i am busy but uh I, I need to come out again and that was that last time i came but gosh I was, gosh it's almost been a year hasn't it it Since has was there last yeah. time but it, it was really good i always like seeing everybody especially you know just people like jim laverde who i'm gonna see for a while you know just always just good folks you know i mean it's always just good it yeah <laughs> so it totally is it's always good to see each other isn't it James? yes it is it really is well, Jamie, you and I go back a few years. Yes, we do. <laughs> I started I started working with Guardian at the very beginning mm -hmm. um, with a different singer, Paul mm -hmm. Cowley. Sure. And I uh, used to have band meetings in my office. And I remember the time when they decided to bring you on as the singer. Mm -hmm. um, I had had some communication with you before that yeah. from... Uh, your old band, mm -hmm. and uh, was very excited to see you joining the band. And then Guardian really took off. You guys did a, a lot of great albums. Um, you blessed a lot of people. There are a lot of Guardian fans watching us right now. Oh, and uh, and it was a, a great time for everyone. But then, like every good thing, some things come to a close. It really does, yeah. <laughs> and and your, your solo... Um, efforts have really really kicked in and you started doing a lot of solo work tell us about that yeah. and how well, that progressed well obviously um well you do we we do go back pastor bob we go back a long way so i remember sitting in my yeah. you know outside of my house in indiana like 87 88 calling the toll-free number to talk to you and everything and yes was, you know and you know and even though I was in a functioning band and everything like that I didn't have like this killer support system around me so people um, people who loved metal and people who loved God and stuff, it just wasn't a real, there wasn't a lot of that in my life. So it wouldn't make sense for me to be on the, on the steps talking to somebody out in California who was leading a movement of, you know, Christian metalhead kids in yes. the late 80s. Yeah. So it's good. But um, just as far as music goes, man, you know, it's, um, I could rehash a lot of stuff I've already said that probably most people would kick in here would, would know already, but, you know, um, Guardian in 2019, I believe. Yeah. We got asked to do this thing for a TBN network. It was basically this series on basically a, kind of where are they now type things. And we, we played a few songs and um, it was funny because at that point I really felt like this is kind of a bookend moment for me. This is kind of a great way. We hadn't played together in a while and hadn't played with Tony in like a good long while. And so I remember when we did those, that show, when I, I really felt like a bookend moment, I felt like, okay, that's, that's the end for me for Guardian. And I really felt that way. And I had no desire to make music beyond that. I really didn't and stuff. I was, you know, living, I live here in Columbia, Tennessee. I've got a great job. I love my life. My life with Amber is phenomenal. And I wasn't looking at anything to disrupt that. But I would still continue to write songs just because I'm wired. Uh, as much as I've tried to shut off, you know, music in my life, I, I still, I can't. It's just, you know, it's just, I, I believe me, guys, I've tried. I would love to not have, to, <laughs> I would actually love to, to, to not sit around and hear something in my head and have to go grab a guitar and work it out, you know, <laughs> so, so it can be put out on the internet and judged by people. So, but no, but yes. you know, it was funny is, uh, so the week after we did that guardian show, 
a friend of mine here in Nashville, Rob Harris, had said, hey, I know you, uh, you've always talked about you'd love to play the Bluebird Cafe sometime because I'm doing a writer's round. Would you like to be a part of that? And I'm like, yeah, I would love to, you know, it's like to, to play my little goofy songs at the Bluebird Cafe. And I went in there and uh, I didn't come in as like Jamie from Guardian or anything like that. It was just basically Jamie Rowe. And I played these songs that nobody else had heard except for Amber. With the exception, I did never say goodbye from Guardian at the end in case there was some Guardian fans that showed up. I thought, OK, I at least want to give them something. And I wrote that song. So that made sense to tell the writers not to play that. But I remember playing that. And songs like This Is Home and Better Off Than Yesterday, Jesus Is The Way, things that were eventually on my first solo uh, country rock record a few years ago. Uh, I had no plans to record those. And the people at the Bluebird loved them. And I was like, you know, I just played for a bunch of strangers who aren't necessarily rock music fans or anything, don't know anything about my history. And they liked the songs I sang. I said, you know what? And this literally was a conversation on the way home. I wonder if I should do a Kickstarter and see if anybody's interested in, in this and making this record. And, you know, and, and to be honest, in my mind, I was thinking, hurry up and let it fail so I can move on with my life. I didn't think anybody would, would, <laughs> I, I really did. And so, and so, I, and the thing, that, the thing I funded in like 11 days, it was kind of crazy. So, um, and then the pandemic hit. So, the, you know, not a whole lot really happened with that record. And then I get to express myself and I didn't have to play by any kind of rules. I just kind of just made the music I wanted to. And at the time, I know this is heresy to a lot of the sanctuary community, but I just really got on a kick where I like country, like pop country, which to me was like 80s metal with an accent. And uh, <laughs> I, th I think God healed me of that a few years ago, by the way. Good, good. <laughs> so, we're, we're happy uh, for that. Yeah, I just, you know, and I, I still have an appreciation for like artists like Lee Bryce, people who are like authentic and real and stuff. But um, just the the surface that i mean and you know even the whole scene of country music's like you know the hard-hitting journalism sites where it's like thomas rett bought a new puppy and it's the, the cutest thing you'll see all day it was just there was just there was not a lot of death going on in any of that yes scene. yes and it, yes. it got to the point during the pandemic when people were losing their jobs and losing their livelihood nobody knew what was going on and, I, and I'm still in this environment where I'm hearing songs like, we're going to have a good time and we'll be sipping. On. So it just, I didn't relate to it at all. So I rediscovered rock and roll during that period and stuff that had really gotten burnt out on became new to me. So oh, awesome. very long answer to a short question. No, no, no. That's a great answer. So you started playing and, and it took off really quickly didn't it jamie yeah it did, it did. as far as like yeah. it depends you know like like compared to like the guardian days no it didn't really take off you know what i mean like that's we had a label machine behind us we had all the stuff you know there was a buzz yeah. it was the it was the right music at the right time but um i'll tell you what even like right now it, it's kind of dumb i i use, use the spotify artist app and i checked my numbers and um i released the calamity kills record about like, 13 13 days ago or something like that and it's it's just doing great every day it's just growing 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 awesome. and i don't have a label or anything behind me so it's just word of mouth it's just people spreading it around and you know there's that cover i love that cover uh, i've been sitting do? i've been sitting on that cover for a year i actually made that in november of last year and, and have been sitting on it all really? year like yes it is like wow i finally got to show it and i was like so excited because it was like I've been sitting on this for a year, you know, and I'm not so crazy about that picture. That was a good idea at the time, but that the, the show up that that's not really the calamity kills vibe. But to me, that's that looks like a uh, and somebody said I look like Boy George, and I hate to say it. I think they might be right there when I look at it, so I can laugh at myself. But anyway, but anyway, Bob. So anyway, so I decided, you know, like I said, rediscovering rock and just writing what I want you know, what, 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 what I hear in my head, just, you know, and not thinking, okay, is this going to do is, you know, with no agenda and everything. And the thing is, you know, I, I don't view what Calamity Kills record, I don't view it as a Christian rock record at all. I really don't. Uh, I don't want to play just for people who agree with me and stuff like that, but I can tell you this, I am a Christian. And so actually I'd rather say I'm a Christ follower because the Christian, you know, could be, you know, anything. A I Christ follower, sure. like, I'd rather be identified as a Christ follower and a Christ seeker. And the thing is, Good. that's the act. Just like if you were to come from Australia and you start talking to me, I'd instantly realize, okay, no matter what you're talking about, this guy's from Australia. I would love for people to hear the music and say, okay, with this guy's accent, I can tell he's a believer in Jesus. That's, that's, mm. that's how I really view it. And, so, and, and to me, that's instead of, dun, 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 Hey everybody, I'm a Christian. <laughs> you know, I'd rather just, you know, <laughs> talk about real life and let them recognize the accent. And, you know, I'm just, I love how Christ communicated 
you know, through parables and storytelling and stuff, and you're greatly engaged. And people, you know, s- studies will show that a well told story will activate regions in the brain that, you know, just basically giving basic information won't. So it's an engaging, it's a communication thing. And I want to be a part of that, man. I really do. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we've got some questions coming sure. in, Jamie. Mm-hmm. Christopher Brown uh, from Santa Rosa, California says, I have two questions. Number one, do you revisit the Tempest catalog in any way? Tempest was your band before mm-hmm. Guardian. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, do I? No, I don't actually. <laughs> I don't. Um, everybody has, everybody, you know, everybody has their, the things that, you know, I, I can't control because, you know, it was one of the early Christian metal releases. You know, there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. Yes. I, I don't, and you know this, Bob, and, and so I, 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 there's a lot of people who have fondness for that era of my performance career. I don't. Mm-hmm. That's just to be yeah. blunt. I don't. So I don't, I don't really, that's kind of like one of those things, like if I could, Rewrite history, I'd, I'd erase that one. That's a beating blunt. Yeah, I, and but, I get that. I know you do, Bob. It was, yeah, it was a little darker time in your life. Guardian mm-hmm. was a, a breath of fresh air for you. Wasn't Guardian it? was brilliant for me in the fact that I still love this to this day. Um, you know, when I when I joined the band, I was I was 20 years old. And the guys in Guardian were, you know, t- Tony was exactly 10 years older than me by a month even. You know what I mean? And so mm. I, you know, all of a sudden, you know, this 20-year-old squirrely kid comes in. And just loves rock and roll, loves, you know, it, and is still new in the faith. Even though I grew up in a Christian school and everything like that, I was still new in the faith, like like three or four years. And those guys were really, the guys I knew when I first joined Guardian and stuff, like we're in my, and I, I don't throw this around, so they were great men of God and they were great examples to me. And yeah, stuff, just how to, totally. how to and, and, I, and I needed that at 20 years old, like severely and stuff, you know what I mean? So I... I love that God put me in, in in a room with those guys. And like I said, what you were talking earlier, that a lot of people has changed some lives. Whatnot. I still get messages all the time. I don't take any credit for it, but I know that God used the band. And so it's yes, kind of, it's, it's really cool. And like I said, I it, today won't pass without getting a notification from something about that, that era. And I, I just, you know, it, I don't want to use any cliche words, but it is humbling. It is, it is like, you know, cause you realize I didn't do that. It is. Man. I didn't do that. I just yeah, sang, you know what I mean? I just sang. That's all I did. I sang and wrote some songs that, you know, some melodies that put together with these other guys and, you know, anything like supernatural that happened on that was not in my realm, man. Yeah. It's awesome. And there's a, a collection of albums yeah. there, you know, number two, uh, the part two of his question was, um, how do you protect your vocal cords? That's Diet a Coke. good question. Diet Coke. Is that what it does? It? No, actually. <laughs> actually, a lot of fluid does. Here's here's what I can tell you. And like I said, I'm really puffy right now. Actually, just in the too much information since I, um, I had a Chipotle burrito yesterday, and I think it gave me some mild food poisoning. So I got like a sharp pain in my stomach. It's kind of crazy, but we're in a safety zone here. But beyond that, but it's hurting. But, yeah. um, but whenever I have to sing, what I realize, especially with the Kills record, and I've, I've only realized this in the last year and a half, I, I went and got an allergy panel done and stuff. And it turns out I'm allergic to wheat. So it's, it's not like I'm, I have a gluten allergy. I'm allergic to wheat. So anything, and they put wheat in everything. So I have a mild food allergy to that. And food allergies, as anything else, like my normal allergies, will swell around your vocal cords. Mm-hmm. What I have learned is on days that I have to either sing live or if I have to record, if I fast that day, my voice comes back to like when I'm 20 years old. I've got all these notes and stuff that I can't I really get right now. It's literally that remarkable of a difference. Wow. So if it's if I know I'm going if I know I'm going to sing, there's two things I do. I take a Prilosec just in case. Um, there's reflux happening like that, but I fast and and usually after about six hours into the fast, things start opening up. And so by the evening when I'm tracking, I've got 20-year-old voice again. It literally That's is amazing. that that amazing. It it really is, and, and how I stumbled on that was just purely by accident because I went through a fasting kick, and I realized, man, like I can sing a song like "Fire and Love" off the first Guardian record that I sang on yeah. stuff. You know, it's like like effortlessly, but when I'm not fasting, it can be a struggle. So, and you can hit those high notes. I can, dude. Song. It's crazy. Yeah. Like fire and love. <laughs> you know, I can hit. That's I call that the crow. So awesome. I can hit the crow. Yeah! that's what you hear in yes. the background tucked back like six tracks of those 
but I can do that. Okay. I mean, even, the, even this morning, stuff, I'm, you know, I haven't eaten anything today, but by six o'clock tonight, I can hit that pretty well if I fast. So crazy. Wow. It doesn't make any sense. But, uh, well, that's this is trash. This is trash, but it's my trash. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie, you you've had some some great opportunity also mm-hmm. to to sing to a, a pretty um, vast crowd of people live. You've opened for Striper. You've done mm-hmm. some great shows. You've you've done some significant things with the family, the metal family. Um, people are excited to have you back, by the way, to awesome. hear your music again. You have so many fans out there that, that love your voice. And this new album is awesome, by the way. Thank you. Great Thank job. You, and the one thing that I keep hearing from people is that, you know, a lot of people, as they get a little older, their voice starts to, you know, waver a little bit. They can't hit the notes they used to, all of that. You didn't miss a beat here. You didn't, uh, you know, you're just as strong and, and uh, your voice is better than ever, in my opinion. And I hear that from a lot of people. Wow. Yeah, it's no, awesome. I, I, I appreciate that. Like I said, I just, the only thing is I've learned if it's like if fasting really does that make that much of a difference for me. But um, it's it's funny on the record. The, the 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 least amount of work we spent on a record was actually the lead vocals. I don't I don't think I spent more than thirty or forty five minutes on any of those songs. That was actually the like the easy part. But at the really? same time, at the same time, I was prepared. Like I said, I've been working these songs forever. So when it came came time to record, if I didn't know them at this time and know how I wanted to sing, <laughs> that's on me. But I I knew it. So we we knocked those <laughs> things out and stuff. And which it's really cool. God bless me one thing with, with, with decent pitch, like I don't have, and, and I can double tracks really easy. So I got things that I can't take credit for that just happen that I benefit from and everything. But, but no, dude, we, we, there's no way we spent more than Absolutely. 45 minutes on any vocal on that record. And, uh, and I love when people say like that connects to me, it's, 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 it's authentic and real. And, uh, and that's what I wanted more than anything, man. That's what I, wanted. I love that. So, and, and even, even, and even if it meant is saying, you know, I listened to calamity. Yeah. Well, he says, I listened to Calamity and Fire and Love back to back, and he really hasn't missed a beat. Sounds better than ever. That's a good Actually, compliment. you know what? It's, I appreciate that, Bobby. And I know Bobby from Facebook. He's a, he's a great guy. And stuff. His whole, a lot of his family up in Illinois and whatnot. Um, he, uh, no, it's, it's cool, but it's funny. I can listen now. Like, I listen to like this song, like The Rain and Fire and Love, which I love. You know, like I said, I was 20. I hear things now like, wow, I'm rushing that vocal or maybe I'm a little pitchy here and there. So I can't. So uh, if I had to, if I could go back and re-record some of this stuff, I would. (laughs) That's just, you know, just age and experience. (laughs) So, but the best left, best left alone, I'm sure. So. Well, Jamie, let's talk a little bit about this new album. Calamity Kills. Do you Mm -hmm. want to talk about the production who's on the album uh, yeah you know what about what was the vision for it no it's funny because this was originally going to be another solo record just a jamie rose solo record and when i had to have the music and i remember going down um you know with, with perino jamie perino who produced this record we started off with one track and we just put that out there and stuff and i was listening to it and i realized everything i sounded it doesn't sound like a solo artist music it doesn't sound like singer songwriter it sounds like band music and so and I didn't really yes. want to have another band at this point in my life. I, I really don't, man. It's like, like I said, I've, I've got a, a pretty full life right now. And, and to, to be the, to have four or five relationships all pulling in a different way, it doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me, but I can still do this thing. But I wanted to have a band entity, band name. And, and to be honest, the name is just something I was putting together words and stuff like that. I thought sounded cool. There's no real deep meaning behind it other than the fact that the fact is that you don't want to, you want peace in your life because calamity kills, you know, if you have to you yes, know, find good, some deeper yes. meaning, that's it. But it really was a, a phrase, a cool word together. But um, no, it's it like I, 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 that got funded through Kickstarter again. And, you know, my original plan was to have it out in February and obviously that didn't happen. And uh, that a lot of that's on me, but I'm so glad it didn't because we were able to take the time and make a record we really wanted to. And make sure, you know, you know, guitars weren't recorded. They were re-recorded a few times if we didn't like the sound or something. We, so we got what we wanted. And we took the extra time. Um, had some great people. Uh, I Through my job at True Tone, I had done an ad for Corn for Guitar World Magazine for our One Spot Power Supply and, and got to know the management people and whatnot. And uh, I remember one day, 
was getting an email from one of those guys while we were tracking a record uh, in management about something. I said, man, it'd be really great to get Ray Luzier to play on this record. And Jamie just mm. happened to mention, he goes, I, I sort of knew Ray back in the day because he was, when Parano was playing with Leanne Rimes, uh, Ray was in a band called The Nixons. Anyway, to get to the point, mm -hmm. I reached back out to the management and said, hey, um, you know, I'm making this record. What would it take to get Ray to play on this record? You pass this on to him. And before they could even respond, we'd already tracked down Ray and we we're already texting with him through Parano. So, and see, so he jumped on. Board. Ray, I'm going to tell you right now, Ray, you know, Ray is a great guy. He's obviously a phenomenal drummer like that. We wanted him just because his drumming ability, but he's just a phenomenal guy. He's become kind of a friend to me. And, you know, I get random texts. He's just a good quality dude. And, you know, and there are believers in that band too, in Corn. you know, Fieldy, both Fieldy and Head are both, you know, believers and stuff. So, it just, it really, I'm just glad to have made that connection. And he slayed on the record. So it's like, he didn't just phone it in. He like, he, he took his time and he was into it and which is great. And that was cool. And then, you know, other people I had on the record, I had Chiarelli Castillo from the band Conquer Divide, which is an all female metalcore band. And that was as random as hearing them on Sirius Octane, uh, Sirius FM Octane and thinking, gosh, she's got such a great voice and, and coming home and doing some research and I found her socials and she said, you know, for features, you know, email me. And so I did. And so we got her on the record. So it's like, I don't really know her, but uh, she did a phenomenal job. And then people I do know, like Ace Von Johnson from LA Guns, it was just a matter of asking him to come down. And uh, Parano knew uh, Greg Upchurch from Three Doors Down. So we got some people who, you know, rock fans will know, but we got them basically because they, they just fit the song like a glove. You know, Ace's, Ace's solo on Hellfire Honey is like, perfect dirty ace fraley tracy guns ace von johnson you know rock and roll and it's perfect so, so great yeah well Raven was just up there and uh, i've known Raven for 20 plus years uh -huh. is. he's the singer for um for antestor which is probably okay. yeah i know the, one band of the yes. heaviest christian metal bands out there and a mm -hmm. uh, great friend he's from norway mm -hmm. and uh he said he's going to have to fast the next time before he does vocals. That's awesome. Yeah. John, would you put on Terry Tripp's comment there again? I wanted to talk about that. There we go. So do you remember, <laughs> do you remember on TBN, the Tripp family? Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, Terry's the youngest one of the family. Okay. He actually I remember, had his own show on TBN. I remember um, him uh, coming to the – to the. We, we met him at somewhere at a studio or something. He was with – um, I don't know if you remember Kevin Allison from r r the radio yeah, station. Yeah, yeah, sure. With Kevin sure, Allison, yeah. I met him. I think he was backstage at a Striper show, actually. It could so, be. Yeah, I, I, but I do yeah. remember him. Yes, Trip Family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I and Terry. Actually, I had Terry say a few words for the very first time we had a sanctuary meeting. Uh huh. The very first time in 1985, he was just a young kid. Yeah. And Terry's always been a fan of metal and. And he's still a good friend of mine. But uh, yeah, Terry, check out the new album. It's really, really good. See, excellent thank stuff. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, it's, yes, excellent. No, but Bob, and we can talk about this too. But like I said, like I, said I, I don't really want to come out that, that this is a Christian project. This is a, you know, you know I, just, I just want it to be heard. And my goal is, is that people will recognize the accent I speak with. You know, and I, and I really realize that may, um, you know, make this whole thing more of an uphill battle. But I've got this vision that I see for kills, and that's kind of what I want to stick to. So like, it may not work. It may, it may not. But I'm just going to be authentic and just and see this through. Well, and I think it is working, Jamie. I I hear nothing but good things. People are excited about it. I think we're all just excited to have you back. To be Back a doing a rock and roll person. thing, yes. people miss people miss the rough, the rasp. That's for sure, man. So, <laughs> but you still, and, and still, and I still like I I still love my country rock record. I really do. But I think, I think when I hear this, I realize okay, this is this is definitely coming home. You know what I mean? Yeah, it and, is. And and, the, and that that's it. And like I said, not writing with no agenda, just write what comes out. And so you know, for all I knew, just thank God that I didn't sit down and write more country music. You know what I mean? So. The, the rock the rock bug bit me big again so yes yeah it really is and um so folks if you haven't listened to this album yet and uh you need to do that 
Jamie, they can listen on Spotify. And yeah, all the it's, regular it's, it's on all, it's on all the all the streaming sites. You can if, if you have a YouTube account, go find the songs on YouTube. You know, I did some lyric videos. If you want to like sing along in your, well, I was oh, gonna say in, I was gonna say in your car, but you don't want to sing along in your car watch a video. So, <laughs> but it's YouTube at Calamity Kills is the username on YouTube. If you want to find the page, yes. but, um, but yeah, just music. I I make music so it's heard, man. So however you can consume it, find it, make it happen um yeah you know spotify awesome. itunes apple music all of the above so it's you know all and i do best. have cds coming for the uh kickstarter backers and once those people got theirs because i want to honor them for you know making it happen i want to make sure they get theirs. Yes. after that i'll look forward to like a public release for cds i want vinyl and actually you know what? i even want cassette so i just i want that retro experience on that stuff so i did 280s covers on the record so i'm going to do a cassette single of those 280s songs Awesome. So just as a novelty, <laughs> just as a novelty, because it's it's two eighties cover songs. Great. And yeah. Dude, so. great idea. Well, don't forget, folks, visit Jamie right here at calamitykills.com for all the information on the album. And Jamie, it's always good to see you, my friend. You too. I, you know, it's it's you know, my my wife loves you too. It's like and she, you know, you she's awesome. haven't spent a lot of time, but enough of it. She just really loves like she she sees your posts and stuff like that. She's I, I just, I just love that. It's like she's she she gets sanctuary. So it's good. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And I think a whole lot of us she's got awesome. sanctuary. Hi from Norway. Sarah says hi. Great. Sarah Marine Carlson. So I'm saying hello as well. She's probably singing it to you, but I'm I'm hijacking your hello and taking it for myself. No, no. Hi, no, Sarah. That's good. <laughs> no. And Jamie, we've got some great friends in Norway, and yeah, you know our our um, our group there is just awesome in Oslo. And uh, you have a lot of fans there and all over the world. So mm -hmm. the, this album has just gotten started. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I expect it to, um, to really take off bigger, bigger, bigger than it is. Folks, don't forget to pick it up when it's available. Mm -hmm. Calamity Kills. Listen to it now on all the places that you listen to music. Jamie, I appreciate you. I love you, my friend. Mm -hmm. And um, great to see you. And uh, folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing. Bye-bye. True story.